It's been 9 months now from the time I published my first video on this channel. Technically speaking, that's when I started this channel and today we crossed 30,000 subscribers which may seem to be too small as compared to other chess channels in my league. But hey, this has all been possible because of your support. And of course I know how underrated this channel is and I believe that's because people haven't discovered it yet. So if at all you're not a subscriber yet, I can tell you what you're missing out. You need to do the needful and if you're already a subscriber the best you can do is to share my channel to a larger audience i do my best of course so thank you so much to all my 30,000 subscribers and i hope to continue delivering the best all right okay so today is yet another day for trying out this beautiful defense that i covered in the video that has popped up in the card above called the gunduram defense i guess that's how to pronounce it but that doesn't matter. I'm going to challenge two random chess players on leeches just to demonstrate how powerful this defense can be. So one beautiful thing about this defense is that many people don't know it and I haven't seen anyone covering it on YouTube so far. Or maybe I didn't just do enough research. But let me challenge the first opponent and see how this is going to work out. All right, let's go. Okay, so I'm um, playing against a 22-37 rated player. So if Pawn to e4, I'll play e5 and queen e7. I um, mean, if white plays knight f3 and d6. So this is what I'm planning to play. Yeah, so pawn to e4, e5. Oh, f4, let me go pawn to d6. I was expecting to see knight to f3, but maybe this is going to transpose back into the Gundaram defense. Bishop c4, let me trade off my light squared bishop just to simplify the game. Yep. And yeah, knight c3, point to c6 to stop knight d5 or knight b5. Castle shot by white, bishop c5 check. Also developing my main piece, which was doing nothing. h6 to stop knight g5. So I covered all these stuffs, you guys, in my tutorial video. You can watch that. So queen g3, knight e7, I think. I also have an option to castle long in the near future. Let's say if queen takes g7. Okay, so point to d3. Now let me castle long. Wow, queen takes g7. I was expecting to see this move, but I knew I had rook dg8. Yep, attacking the queen. And where is this queen going to go? Is my opponent's queen dropped? Oh, he has knight g5. After which I'll take that knight. Yep. And yeah, yeah, I think h takes g5 and queen takes f7. Oh, but I have rook f8. Because white's rook on f1 is undefended and my dark squared bishop is doing a great job of cutting this diagonal up to g1 while I'm winning. I also have a sacrifice on h2 and maybe queen h4 checkmate later on. I've seen this position before or kind of. So rook f8 I think is the only sensible move. If queen takes that will be made after rook takes f1 checkmate. Because black's pieces are undeveloped <laughs> except for the queen and knight. So rook f8, I think. Yep. So white has to give up his queen. And I'm going to take with my knight. Let's say queen takes f8, knight takes f8. Yep. So now taking with my knight looks good. And I always have a sacrifice on h2. Bishop g5 I think let me play knight g6 so knight fg6 okay so rook attack queen g4 as if I'm attacking the bishop but mate on h2 rook takes and king takes queen h4 mate <laughs> oh okay so <laughs> let me just quickly show you some of the main ideas in the Gundaram defense if White plays the logical moves. Okay, so I was expecting white to start with e4 and after pawn to e5, I was 
Expecting to see knight to f3, cause the idea is that after knight to f3, I was supposed to play queen e7, and maybe let's say after bishop c4 or d4, I was going to play d6, and if d takes e5, I was gonna play de, queen e7, and c6, but pawn to f4 is what white played to my surprise, after which I just played pawn to d6, cause I wanted to uh, still transpose the game back into the gondora, my idea was to still go queen e7, so so that's why I played d6 right in this position just to maintain my pawn structure of the Gondoram defense and if f e I was going to play d e and c6 next in order to maintain my pawn structure knight to f3 was played and here I played queen e7 ready for uh, queen c7 next after pawn to c6 I covered all these things in my tutorial video and I was going to play bishop e7 knight f6 and pawn to h6 not pawn to h5 and then castle short in this position fe was played anyways and i took back with my d pawn and i was hoping to see knight c3 after which i was prepared to play pawn to c6 but bishop c4 is what white played in this position and I quickly remembered to trade off my light squared bishops because that's what I said in my tutorial video and let me show you one funny line that I prepared if white took on e5 I would have played queen h4 check and uh, probably uh, you know caused some chaos on the king side I'm attacking the e4 pawn and the best that white can do here is just to play king f1 after which I would have played Queen f6 attacking the knight and after the knight goes back I was going to take the bishop on c4 with check and this was going to be winning for me but my opponent took the light squared bishop I took back and after knight c3 I played pawn to c6 because remember white wants to play knight d5 so c6 prevents knight d5 and knight b5 it is a very key move in this defense so bishop c5 is what i played after white castle short and that also stops pawn to d4 but anyways king h1 was played to stop knight g5 i played uh pawn to h6 and here i think white played queen yeah queen e1 after which i played knight bd7 preparing to castle long in some lines but i knew the king was on h1 so i had no any problems here but anyways queen g3 was played by white and i noticed that white wanted to capture on g7 that's why i played knight e7 in order to uh prepare for castle long after something like queen takes g7 which is what i played by the way so white here played pawn to d3 and i did castle long to allow queen takes g7 which was actually a blunder and i was very surprised after white played this move queen takes g7 i was happy to play rook d g8 to trap that queen but white was able to save his queen by sacrificing his knight i mean the queen was just trapped so knight g5 was played and hg is what i played and queen takes f7 the rest is history and i just played the remaining moves by intuition anyways let me challenge another opponent just to see how this defense will work out and hey before i do that be sure to hit the like button if at all you are enjoying this video and subscribe to my channel in order to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one that's if you haven't already and you can do that during this short break and stay tuned okay welcome back so e4 e5 i'm playing against the 23 47 rated player so i need to be very careful again the gondoram defense knight c3 pawn to c6 preventing knight d5 or knight b5 you already know what is happening here bishop c4 pawn to d6 preparing for bishop e6 yep the idea is to exchange our light squared bishops as soon as we can so pawn to h3 bishop e6 oh so queen e2 let me go pawn to h6 i think to prevent knight g5 just a waiting move kind of so pawn to b3 clearly my opponent is avoiding to trade bishops okay so b5 i'm still asking white to know what he wants to do with his bishop this is kind of annoying but anyways he just retreated his bishop but let me go queen c7 
to indirectly protect my E5 pawn. I think after which I'm going to play knight f6, bishop is 7 castle short, or probably go pawn to b4 and a5. So white castle short, knight f6, a4, let me go b4, attacking the knight next, I'll play pawn to b5. So you can see how I'm getting more space on the queen side. So knight e3 by white, bishop e7, preparing to castle short anyways. Bishop b2, castle short, and let me go knight d7. Oh, so bishop c4, let me go knight d7 anyways. I don't mind even if white takes my bishop on a6 because I'm going to take back with my f pawn, which would be, yep, which is nice because now I'm controlling the f5 square. So white can no longer put his knight on f5 and I also have d4 or maybe I can just take on e4 next yep because if de yep now i take back with my knight and after knight takes pawn takes yep and knight c4 by white let me go i think the move is knight g5 because i'm going to lose my knight the position is still unclear and kind of shaky Okay, so I think I played many passive moves. I'm going to lose my pawn on e5. Let me just go knight g5. There's nothing much I can do. Oh, after all, we have equal number of pawns. So knight g5 is okay. And yeah, bishop takes now. I can go queen d7. Next, queen e8 and queen g6 so rook ad1 queen e8 i want to put my queen on g6 and now you can see why it is important to trade light squared bishops look at all my weaknesses here imagine if white had a light squared bishop i think knight f7 here because my knight is under attack by the pawn on f4 so i'm preparing to go rook a d8 okay so bishop b2 rook a d8 and queen e7 next oh i should be very careful queen g4 attacks my pawn on g7 white wants to mate me so let me go pawn to g5 i think if pawn takes i'll take with my knight and open up the position yeah my position is very shaky Okay, so with queen h5, white is planning to play queen g6 next and met me on g7, supported by the bishop on b2. So anyways, let me go king h7, I think, to stop queen g6 and queen g7 checkmate. Anyway, so queen, king h7, stopping queen g6. I'm ready to take on g5 if fg happens and we'll be able to trade our queens. Yeah, because my queen is indirectly eyeballing white's queen on h5. So let's see what white is going to do. If rook takes, I'm going to take with my knight. Okay, fg, knight takes g5. Hope my opponent won't hang his queen. Okay, there we see queen e2. Queen back to e2. Now it's time to play queen e7, I think. Or maybe rook d5, yep. So rook d5 invites white to take on d5. So if rook takes, I'm going to take with my c pawn, not my e pawn. I'm going to take with my c pawn. And that is going to, yeah, attacking the knight. Oh, I just left my pawn on a5. Okay, so queen check. Let me put my queen block with my queen simplify the game yeah i knew i was going to lose my pawn on a5 so bishop d6 check knight okay so my time is very low you guys so let me do less of commentary here and focus what to trade the knights 
I'm trying by all means to stop the pawn from promoting. I think bishop a7, and then bishop takes, knight takes. Ah, okay, so I just flagged my opponent, which are bad manners, but I guess we both didn't play very well. But I'm still going to post this video because I think it's very instructional, especially in the opening stage. And let me just show you what I was expecting to see or maybe where I went wrong exactly. Okay. Okay, so let me go back to somewhere around here where white declined my bishop trade. So I wanted white to take my light squad bishop and the, the whole idea was to take white's light squad bishop but I couldn't because I thought that was going to activate his queen. For example, if bishop takes, queen takes, I didn't know what to do, that's why I played it 6 and after pawn to b3 I played b5 just begging for white to accept my bishop exchange and oh I think next time what I should do is play pawn to a6 and then put my rook on a7 yeah so that I can play queen c7 followed by bishop e7 knight sorry knight f6 and castle short i think that's the simplest response a6 rook a7 queen c7 bishop e7 and knight to f6 i think that's the answer to most of these opponents who don't like exchanging bishops all right so this is all for today you guys i hope you enjoyed this video if at all you did please be sure to hit the like button as a way of encouraging me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one and remember to subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already and also visit my website www.casperchess.com to check out my courses which are currently going at very affordable prices